Welcome to the main event. This is a short video slide presentation about showing lion heads at the national level. And from a, a perspective of a national judge and also from a lion head breeder, some of the key characteristics and type that really stand out and kind of separate your national winning habit from those that were competitive, but just lower in the class. So I've titled this the main event as we get into the key features of, of this breed and of nationals level animals in particular. So this little cover girl is my senior doe. And start with, whoops, too far, the breed emphasis. So one thing I want to is to think about as we talk about nationals quality animals, what makes those animals stand out to all judges, not just breeder judges, national judges, but judges of the lionhead breed in particular. As you look at the standard, obviously the highest category is and the body is a close game. Everything else after that is it's kind of the opposite. If it's not a DQ, it's going to add to your animal, but it's not going to be what made an animal's winner. And we're going to talk about that. So at the national level, your top exhibits use convention point as our reference point. There's a lot of shows since then haven't happened. We'll have abundant mane. And all of them, as you looked at the variety winners and the coops, and have some pictures coming up. Um, Every one of them uh, was fantastic. The length of main, the density, but the best of it, the ones that were at the top and that won that low competition had balance. Balance between main and a lot of impact lately on the standards, which would be important the rollback for a saddle, the balance and feet in mane, and that's where the emphasis of our, our reason. Um, head and ear definitely play a role, and color becomes important as you start to find line to very competitive animals and you get down to the distinction. Um, the most important things that I think can't be overemphasized because this is a newer breed is the fact that a high head mount is structural. Often when you struggle posing an animal, it's because it's just not properly put together and it's uncomfortable for that animal to sit high off the table. And the high head mount in the lion head is specific to our breed. It's specific in that it needs to show the full mane and the bib. So if the rabbit is posed in a way that the full bib isn't present, that's not a high head mount. It's not correct for our standard. So our standard describes it. Easy for a properly structured animal to stay upright in that very showy high head position. And that's indicative, not only of, of table presence and handling, but it's indicative of strength. Uh, Nationals animals, every single one of them was extremely compact. And when I say compact, it's close coupled. When your rabbit is correctly posed, if you have length in the midsection, so between the last rib of that animal and the hip, if you can have a full finger length before the hip, the, the turn of the front of the stifle hits that rib and you've got extra length there, that's midsection. And in a close compact, short coupled breed, that's a negative thing. We want these rabbits upright, bold, compact, very, very um, close coupled in body. The other thing that's most often noted um, as I judge kind of around the country now is the, the breadth of body. Our standard for the lion head says that they should be broad through the shoulders, through the chest. They need to carry tremendous width of body to match boldness. So the bold head is not really going to be that impressive is if you go down and feel that animal and you have narrowing through the shoulder, through the chest, through the and through that midsection. This standard specifies not just a high head mount to show full mane and bib, it's broad chest 
broad through the shoulders. And those words are the adjectives that judges reflect on as they judge this breed. It's bold, it's compact, it's high head mount, it's broad. So those are the things in your image, in your mind, as you go through those, those points to determine what animals are really representative of the ideal animal. Um, this fourth bullet here is one of the most common faults I see across the country, and that is they're not well fleshed over the pin bones. So as you take your hand and you evaluate with the shoulder, midsection, hindquarter, if that flesh covering over the pins, if the pins are sharp or really protruding, it greatly detracts from a well fleshed broad animal because now you're feeling lack of condition, lack of flesh, and it's not presenting a well-rounded, full, broad hindquarter. So that lower hindquarter is another point of emphasis. You'll, you often, um, I often see animals that have a beautiful mane. It's, it's even in length, it's got decent texture, and, it's, and the emphasis is obviously on that mane because when you get behind the mane, you realize there's no balance. That body is not there supporting this mane. You might feel narrowness, um, length in that midsection, certainly poor fleshing over those hindquarters and pins. And those are the animals that visually, when you see a coop full of lion heads, people immediately start going, oh, look at the mane. Oh, ah, this is exciting. And then the judge pulls that animal from the coop, place, sets that animal up, and suddenly that animal's third or fourth. And people are just shaking their heads saying, does the judge not understand that mane is 35 points? No, we clearly get it, but 70 points are something else. Well, 65 points are something else. And that's where balance becomes critical between these national is um, it gets, with the lion hens in particular, because they are the only breed that has this mane that I feel it becomes almost overly emphasized. And 35 points is a third of your grade, that's very significant. But absent a body hold that mane and a proper structure, head mount, it's only wool. And you just aren't gonna have that much success without that balance. Um, color is down here toward the end. There's a reason for that, it's 10 points. 10 points is significant. Obviously, if there's a DQ, we have a separate issue, but I'm talking about animals that meet the breed specifics for color. Um, it is important, the National Club decided to only allot 10 points to it because we didn't want it to become a major point of of, of breeding or of judging. We wanted it to be a, a kind of a fine-tuned approach when you've got two animals that are very comparable in mane and in body structure, then you might decide your deciding factor very, very well could be color. It could come down to prime fur, rollback saddle, and it could come down to color. But those two things are never gonna outpoint an animal that has a correct structure, excellent broad type, and a big profusal mane. So I think I, I, we need to kind of make that point very clear because I know when uh, exhibitors, especially newer exhibitors, because this breed has gotten a lot of popularity, uh, when they watch behind the tables and you see these huge maned animals, and those aren't the animals that won nationals this year. Those aren't the animals that won nationals last year. And they're wondering what's going on. I thought Maine was important. It's, a, it's extremely important because that's what makes this breed this breed. But absent body and the other factors, you don't have a balanced animal. So that's my main takeaway today is that the winning national rabbit may not have the most length of mane or the best density of mane or even the best body profile, but it will have the best balance of all these features and it will be in good condition with good color and fur. And so let's move on to the difference between BIS and second. And the difference is the best lion head the rabbit that is very beautiful, showy, with a dense even mane, high head mount, and broad in body. So, and it's I know people get very, very focused on and the upright wide head lion head with full prongs will rise to the top, or they should. And even with a mane breed, not be overlooked for me. I have examples here from 2019 convention. So your winning tort buck, pictured down below, excellent body. He had a good mane. He didn't have the best mane, he had the best of mane. 
but what he did have was tremendous balance. He was an animal in excellent condition. He got full points on condition and color. He also had a beautiful rollback saddle and glossed high prime, and his mane was very uniform in length in density and in texture. The thing about this buck that was outstanding was that all of that was put together on a broad, bold headed body with a high head mount. He was exceptionally wide through that shoulder. He had correct taper, slightly wider through the hind quarters. There was no pin bones. You felt through that animals across that top line. That's what I'm doing here in this photo is I'm evaluating what his condition of flesh is. And he was ex exceptionally well fleshed, beautifully round that hind quarter. And the other characteristic of lion heads that um, sometimes kind of pervade the breed a bit is being a little pinched. In hind quarter. This particular animal was completely wide all the way through that upper hind quarter, through that lower hind quarter. Um, he was a beautiful example, and I was very excited to find him. For our open best of breed, uh, for those that weren't at nationals last year, Adam Schuller and I judged together. Uh, we had some exemplary varieties to select from. And in the video, which is on the National Lionhead page of our final placings, we were unanimous that this tort doe was unbeatable this day. And it was not because she had the best texture, because she didn't. She didn't have the best length of mane. Her mane, um, I don't think she won the contest, but what she did have was balance. She was the best balanced lion head that presented all of those characteristics in a nationals level animal and the best main animals couldn't beat her because they couldn't match her structure and her width and breadth of body. So again, it was that broad shoulder, midsection, wide to the table and just impressive head mount. So this picture that I have here in the center, we didn't even pose that doe. That's what's funny is we literally made our announcement, made our selection for best to breed. We just turned the doe on the table that stood back and she sits this way naturally. She's very structurally correct and balanced. This is her showing a full mane and full bib without us really prompting her to do so. She's just naturally wide, high head mount and very full to the table, um, exceptionally correct dough. So I know we did have some questions later from uh, folks that were in attendance going, why did that nationals rabbit win? You know, because clearly there were other um, rabbits there on the table with a more impressive mane. So we got to kind of give this, this talk a little bit impromptu during the contest to explain that 35 points is on the, what you see as an exhibitor. That's it. So you see this amazing mane and you think it's incredibly impressive with texture and crimp and then you get over there and you pull the animal out and you, you pose that animal well that's going to be the balance of the grade does that body the flesh condition the finish of fur the color do all those things blend together to create the balance of that nationals rabbit and the top breeders definitely understood that because they brought forward animals that just um they were just fantastic, truly fantastic. And the other photo that you see here is the back of the coop. So from the exhibitor's perspective, uh, the torts were a very competitive variety. Characteristically, they've been one of the most competitive because it was one of the first varieties recognized. So there are probably just more of them. And from this view, you can see the quality. They all have impressive saddles. They've got beautiful round bodies. All of these rabbits in these coops are sitting with a beautiful high head mount. So the structure is excellent. But the last part, which is the, the broad weight and flush condition can't be assessed visually. And that's where hands-on approach is the only way to fully evaluate and assess an animal. And I know with these online shows, that's been a question that's been brought up um, hundreds of times. You know, can you fairly evaluate virtually? And my opinion, we all have our own, is that you can't. I think you can get to the top of the class. I think you can get to who should be the top three, top 10 animals maybe in a, in a deep class, but without actually evaluating flesh condition, fill, depth and width and turn over those and well fleshed, you know, pin bones and, and fill to that lower hind quarter, that really is something that, that has to be met with a manual evaluation. You've got to be able to feel the shoulder, the connection, the midsection length of flesh. So, um, 
that's one thing that I think the judges have a very big advantage is as you're an exhibitor watching the questions that get raised, you have to keep in mind the visual element is only a piece of the assessment. And at this level of competition, all the variety winners are good choices for best of breed. What made our decision unanimous, again, at the 2019 convention was balanced. The B.O.B. Doe, uh, here's another great picture of her. She has an incredible bold head, good width between the eyes, excellent feel through that muzzle, and extremely dense mane, really beautiful, even density, even length, even texture. Um, there was a couple of varieties that had better texture to that wool, a little more evident, even crimp to that wool, but did not have the other elements that made this dough the best dough that day. And those elements were body, type, finish. The youth best of breed rabbit is pictured over here on these slides on the right as well. Outstanding animal. Often with your senior bucks, you'll notice that they don't tend to carry as much density and length of mane. Um, that's just noted in the lion head breed in general. And when I pulled this buck out, I had to look uh, to make sure he was in the correct division when I placed my classes because he has, a, he has what is known as a doe mane. He just had this tremendous density, texture, and evenness of crimp that was uh, outstandingly impressive. Then when I put my hands on this animal, again, I was just immediately impressed by the condition, the width through his chest, the broad power through his shoulder, and he was well fleshed through that loin, that midsection, through those pin bones, and carried tremendous balance Compact, upright, typey, well balanced. Um, very, very exciting win, very beautiful animals. And these were the factors that really kind of made the difference that day. The, this next slide is, is what I call tipping the scales. So when you have highly competitive classes, there are things that can increase competitiveness. Obviously at the top of my list is where it needs to always be. And this pretty much is for every breed. Well groomed and presented. So when your animal comes to the table, if, they're, if there's fur flying, they have extremely long nails, they cannot pose correctly, they're not gonna look as prime, they're not gonna look as um, eye appealing, and they're not gonna get as many condition points. And so it's, for an exhibitor, I think that should be almost a no-brainer. But unfortunately, I can tell you from talking to many judges and judging over a thousand shows now, it's not always the case. Uh, number two, bucks with profuse manes. Now, nowhere in the standard does it tell us to give more points to a buck with a very profuse mane over a doe with a very profuse mane. But I'm just saying what happens in, you know, in our um, mental faculties as we're evaluating these classes is we know how rare it is to see a senior buck with an incredible length, density, and texture of mane because that's the hardest thing so far with this particular breed is to get bucks to hold mane. And when you see that, it, 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 it impacts you as a judge, the judges that know this. Um, and it's very similar in other breeds. In mini Rex, for instance, I've heard many judges say, this is a buck with a doe coat. Um, does traditionally have a better texture. They're just known for having a little bit of that, that estrogen influence that just really puts that finish of fur on them. And when you get a, a buck or a senior buck that's just got that extreme texture with that density, um, that comment um, often uh, leaves, a, leaves an impression in your mind as you're judging between two very comparable animals. Uh, also varieties. So a white variety with extreme length or density compared to other varieties in the lion head, characteristically, uh, traditionally, they don't tend to have um, as long of a mane, as extreme texture and crimp as some of the other varieties, Siamese Sable, your Torts. And so when you see these whites with these uh, comparable manes, uh, it's impressive, it's impressive. The other thing that makes it a difference to a judge is when your rabbit will pop into that pose. So they're so structurally correct and they've had some handling, right? We've all seen the wild rabbits that you get on the table and they try to fly off the table or the lion heads that they're um, afraid because they haven't really been handled so they wanna hit the deck. That does not help your animal to place well in a class. So the animals that can pop into a pose naturally are those that are structurally correct. It's evidence of correct body structure, but they're also not incredibly fearful. 
they have been handled, they have had some table training, and that absolutely can affect your placings. And it, this isn't just with Lionhead in this particular bullet point, it could be with tans, it can be with pollens that wanna you know, rear off the table and that wanna continually root with their heads. If you cannot get the animal to be in its proper pose, it's very difficult to evaluate that fully according to its SOP for structure. Uh, table presence is the next bullet and that directly relates to everything above. It relates to um, how well conditioned and turned out they are, how well groomed, presented. The quality of prime coat affects their color, it affects their mane. Uh, whether or not they will pose and hold that definitely all impacts your table presence. And then obviously prime condition with correct vibrant color. There's a lot of uh, breeds that will show less than prime animals, um, exhibitors just trying to build numbers and that's understandable, especially if you're close on legs or it's, it's a variety that there aren't very many. And so you wanna get those other animals out there, um, notable. But for other people that are showing animals that are not in prime condition, they often will you know, keep getting discouraged because they are not getting the higher placings. So something to keep in mind. Um, the next two slides are gonna talk about the color challenge. So with the lion head breed, there are several color challenges. I chose to kind of emphasize steel because in my opinion, my perspective as a judge, this is the color that I see that exhibitors wanna argue about most often. If a rabbit does not have shading. It has to have sepia brown on the saddle and from the end of the mane to the tail and it must have shading to a slightly lighter tint on the flanks, chest, and belly. And I always refer exhibitors back to the SOP when this question comes up. If your rabbit appears dark every, in all these points, it's a self. Phenotypically, it's a self. And I just qualify those. If you have a seal your seal has to match the SOP description of color and it genetically may have the CCHL gene. I have no way of, of knowing that, but if it doesn't phenotypically present the correct shading and a sepia brown and it looks phenotypically like a black, it is in the wrong class. And this is one of the things that I've come across, I would say probably close to 50% of the time I will get a solid black rabbit with little to no shading or it'll have rust. It'll have like a rust tinge around the flank wool, some of the transition wool areas, the feet. And that can be evidence of sun bleaching, a dirty cage. That is not shading. It's not a sepia brown saddle. And it's certainly not a lighter tint on the flank, chest and belly. So this example that I provided here is a good seal and I hope this comes through in the in the photos that you can see the sepia brown over that saddle area. I hope you can see the shading down the flanks, the chest and the belly and then the darker pointed areas. And then on the next slide, I hopefully made it even more clear. So varieties are judged by phenotype. And I think this is the most important thing to remember when trying to present an animal as a color that it should be, but maybe the color that is bred to be is not being expressed due to modifiers, state of molt, uh, the animal may be being exposed to indirect sunlight, a lot of sun bleaching. There are a variety of reasons why a particular animal won't appear the color that it genetically should be. Um, both of these rabbits and these examples have the CCHL gene. They may be seal by genotype, but only one of these passes by phenotype. So sepia brown shading, again, it must be visible to qualify for this variety. So on the left, I think it's very evident. This animal has some beautiful sepia. When you flip this animal over, guess what else you see? You see that shading, you see sepia brown in addition to that seal color and you see a transition of color. And that shading is what makes this variety shaded. The undercolor should also match the shadings of the rabbit. So a black rabbit has a slate blue undercolor. Your steel should have that sepia brown. It should match the shadings on that animal. So like again, I, I mentioned the modifiers. They can make your offspring from your shaded varieties appear different. Uh, Self-chin can also appear different. 
So uh, my last point about this variety and about the difficulty in trying to, to show an animal uh, in a variety that genetically it might be, but it doesn't express that color, is arguing with the judge is never going to help. The judge is going to acknowledge that, okay, thank you for telling me that this is a seal times a rue breeding, or that this is a seal to a Siamese stable. You know, thank you for, you know, it's great to know that he has a CCHL gene. Um, however, today, your animal is almost nearly self in color. It does not have the shadings. It does not have the sepia brown saddle. It does not have the lighter shading down the belly, the flank, and the, the lower extremity. It cannot qualify for that variety. So I hope it makes sense. As you, as you look at your animal and you read your standard of perfection, try and, and critically evaluate whether or not genetically it is that variety. Um, does it look like the description says it should? Because if it doesn't, you shouldn't be surprised when judges call into question if this animal is correctly entered. Let's see. And that uh, pretty much concludes my lionhead review talking about the nationals animals and balance. Thank you for this opportunity to discuss this breed a little more in depth and good luck to all of our lionhead COD presenters. I'm very hopeful that we're going to see some new varieties on the table soon. I was fortunate to be able to judge these last year, uh, the blue eyed whites, the blue sable point. I know they have working standards and I believe the seal or the seal points and the smoke pearl also are under development. So very exciting time for this breed. Thanks again and appreciate you watching.